Welcome to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and my new head tracking VFX course, The Blendinator, is finally out of early access, and the full course has been released on my website, blenderfrenzy.com, with a new launch sale. The sale is only available for a limited time, so get it while you can. It will also be coming soon to Blender Market and Gumroad and possibly several other platforms, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. You can find any of the links of the course in the description below, but this video is a summary of each chapter showing you what you will learn during the whole process of the course. Stay tuned to the end of the video if you're interested, and then I will show you how to get access to the course. So without wasting any more time, here's a brief overview of all the chapters in the Blendinator. Chapter one is all about filming and preparation. I will show you how to go about filming your shot with tips and tricks that I learned along the way, as well as some advice to help you avoid mistakes that past Justin initially made so that you don't have to make those same mistakes. So within once you have your footage, we'll import that as an image sequence into Blender to be tracked, which brings us to chapter two, which is all about object tracking. Chapter two is all about how to take original footage you filmed, track the markers on your face, and generate a good solve that creates a 3D rendition of the motion of the head. The first video starts off with how to set up Blender for motion tracking for the complete beginner. It goes over the motion tracking workspace and best settings to start with if you have never done any motion tracking in Blender before. You can skip this video if you're already familiar with Blender's motion tracker. In the first half of the chapter, I will show you my personal tracking workflow using only a couple trackers. Then I'll implement those same concepts to track all the rest of the markers on my face. Now, what makes this different from standard YouTube tutorials is the amount of head turning that you'll be able to track. Most object tracking tutorials only show the head slightly moving with all the tracks always showing on the screen. In this course, you learn how to track significant motion where tracks are constantly disappearing and reappearing. In the second half, I will show you various tips, tricks, and techniques for how to get a good solve error, which are just fancy words for a good 3D tracking calculation. At the end of this chapter, you should be able to recreate the motion of the head movement in 3D space using a combination of various techniques. Chapter 3 is all about taking the Terminator skull that is included in the course and shaping it to fit the subject's head. First, we'll learn how to parent the skull to the 3D trackers so that it moves with the motion of the head. Then we'll go over various techniques for how to start pulling and pushing the skull geometry to best match the shape and contour of the head. Now, while you do this and you are attempting to match 3D objects to your motion tracking, you may notice errors that you hadn't initially recognized when solving the motion. Therefore, in the second half of the chapter, I'll go over lots of different debugging measures you can implement to fine tune and make your motion tracking match the footage and skull as tightly and smoothly as possible. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to attach and fit a 3D skull to match real world footage of a turning head. Chapter four is all about creating negative space in your footage in order to make room for 3D objects. In traditional movie special effects, artists were limited to adding stuff onto the face, but could not actually cut holes into the face. Modern VFX now allows you to use various compositing techniques to give the appearance of creating holes that go into the face. First, we'll start by creating a 3D mask that will be used to cut out the head from our footage and replace it with the clean plate that we got of our background. This will give the appearance of a headless figure in motion. We'll then use the mask along with various compositing techniques to create negative space and combine CG elements with the footage, such as the 3D skull. We'll cover topics such as generating a black and white occlusion mask, green screen keying, both from green 3D elements, and from an actual green screen backdrop that you filmed, using view layers and render passes, and how to combine them in the compositor to produce various effects. We'll go over how to add detail to our occlusion mask so that it hides and reveals very specific parts of the footage we want. And once we've got the masks, the king, and compositing all working for us, 
will render them out and combine them using the video sequence editor to produce a real-time rendition of our results that we can then further tweak and color grade to our heart's desire. At the end of the chapter, you should have full knowledge and understanding of how 3D masks work in Blender and be able to use them in the compositor to create negative space in your footage. Chapter 5 is, in my opinion, when the most fun begins. In this chapter, we'll take the concepts and techniques of the previous chapters and introduce texture painting in order to start creating wounds on our face. We'll paint different spots on our black and white masks in order to tell Blender where the wounds should be located. Then we'll take the painted information and use it to generate a displacement map, giving the wounds depth. I'll even show you how to add materials in a way that allows you to adjust the amount of depth and thickness with very simple sliders. Don't worry, nothing in this chapter is all that bloody, but if you're looking to add some light gore to your footage, you will learn how to do that in this chapter using a rudimentary red fleshy texture. Overall, we'll talk about concepts such as texture painting, displacement maps, holdout layers and shaders, shadow creation, render methods in EV versus cycles, and how to work in the shader editor with material nodes. Once you complete the chapter, you should know how to add light gore to your scene by painting wounds onto a face with texture painting, masks, materials, and Blender's shader editor, all in order to reveal the metal skull that appears to be beneath the skin. Chapter 6 is a quick and dirty introduction to rudimentary environment creation, showing you how image-based lighting can cast accurate reflections off of the skull, or any object that you put in your scene. This chapter is specifically for those who do not have a 360-degree camera and need to quickly stitch photos together in Blender for a simple interior room. Once we've stitched the images together to create full renditions of all four walls, the ceiling, and the floor, we'll slap them onto the six sides of a simple box in Blender in order to create a very primitive room. As always, there are lots of tips and tricks along the way, stitching, combining, adjusting the lighting, and navigating the scene, all this to give the illusion that the skull is reflecting the real world. When you're done with this chapter, you should be able to stitch photos together to create a simple environment box of an interior room that will reflect off of your CG objects adding to the realism of your scene. Chapter 7 is an introduction to 2D and 3D masking techniques that you can use to remove face markers. First, I'll show you the traditional 2D masking workflow that is very common among VFX artists. This is my least favorite method because it is slow and painful. But since 2D masking is a skill you'll want to have, I figured I'd at least show you how it's done in Blender. But the real fun comes with a 3D masking workflow. I'll show you how easy it is to set up 3D circles to follow the 3D trackers that we already created. And since we already have our motion tracked, we don't even need to animate anything once they are in place. This will save so much time. The second half of the chapter is devoted to using those masks to remove the dots on my face in the compositor. I start by showing you the traditional compositing workflows for marker removal. However, since I mistakenly used big blue dots on my face instead of small black dots, the traditional method doesn't fully cut it here. So I will show you several advanced techniques you can use in order to get rid of bad markers if you have them. By the end of this chapter, you should know how to remove face markers using both traditional and advanced workflows for optimal marker removal. Chapter 8 is an introduction to projection mapping using Blender along with a free and open source program called FSpy. In this chapter, I take you step by step through the entire projection mapping process to create a simple game box called Exploding Kittens. Yes, this is a real card game, and no, I'm not being paid to sponsor them. We will discuss how to use FSpy to create optimal camera positions in Blender for projecting an image in order to build out the game box according to the image. I will explain how the UV project modifier works, how UV maps work, and how the two interact with each other. 
You will also learn how to take that projection and bake a high res image onto a low poly model. Then in the second half of the chapter, we use these concepts to combine multiple F-SPY cameras that project different angles of the same object for maximum texture coverage. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to use F-SPY to create and import multiple cameras into Blender that project images from different angles in order to build 3D objects from the real world. Chapter 9 is the final chapter where we will take the projection mapping concepts from Chapter 8 and apply them to an interior room in order to create a rough, low-poly version of it in 3D. We do this so that the metal skull will have accurate lighting and reflections from my living room where I filmed the scene. You can use these concepts for capturing exterior scenes as well, but since I recorded this indoors, this chapter is all about how to recreate my living room by projecting the images that I took with my phone. This chapter doesn't only apply the concepts of the previous chapter, but it also adds onto them with various additional techniques and workflows you can use to duplicate, project, and combine cameras and images in order to build and piece together an entire interior room. We'll cover topics such as manual camera duplication, various camera alignment methods, image blending techniques, consolidating cameras and UV maps, piecing together room chunks, recreating clean geometry from those chunks, and baking a high-res texture for the entire room. At the end of this chapter, you should be able to use overlapping images taken of an interior room and recreate a rough low-poly 3D version of it using F-SPY and Blender in order to produce accurate lighting and reflections on your 3D models. Chapter 9 also marks the end of the course, so at the very end you will learn how to take everything from the course and put it all together to produce an awesome CG enhanced scene of a head turning to reveal a menacing Terminator skull under its wounded flesh. So there you go, that's a summary of what you'll find in the course. And of course, you'll also have access to the downloads that contain all the relevant matter for all of the lessons, including the 3D Terminator skull, the footage of my head turning, the source images of my living room, as well as any modified images. You also get the final blend file results of each chapter. You'll get the image sequences, masks, materials, and final rendered video of whichever ones we did in some of the lessons. On top of all of that, I will be continuing to add extra bonus videos as time goes on. Some possible future videos might be animating the Terminator eyeball to move along with my real eyeball, and I really want to get to that. Uh, some other things might be techniques for projection cleanup so that your projections don't look so wonky. Uh, creating an edge feather mask node. I also maybe want to introduce Perspective Plotter, which is an alternative to FSPY. It is a paid add-on, but it goes directly into Blender, so that's kind of nice. Maybe creating your own HDRI maybe modeling a 3D version of your own face, and then also maybe adding a cool science fiction background or something like that. So these are all the things that you can look forward to in the Blendinator. And after you are all finished, you should be able to create something that looks like this. So there you go, that's what's inside, and if you've made it this far and want to learn more, click on the link in the description to take you to the Blendinator landing page. As you scroll down the page, you'll see a glimpse of everything that's included in the course. Then, at the bottom of the page, you'll see the course curriculum that lists all the chapters and lessons that are inside, including lots of free preview videos you can get access to in order to get a feel of the course before making a purchase. So to do so, click on one of the free preview videos enter an email and password to create a free preview account. Once you log in, click on the course, and you'll be able to navigate through and play through all of the free videos. If you're ready to purchase the full course, click on the Buy Now button, which takes you to the Purchase button on the landing page. You must be at least 13 years or older to purchase the course, so if you are, fill out the information, tick all the boxes, and enter your card details to complete your order. Once you log in, 
Click on the course and you'll have access to all the videos and the downloads. If you have any issues or questions, leave me a comment on this video or send me a message on my contact page on the website. For those of you on Blender Market and Gumroad, keep an eye out for the course coming soon to those platforms. Other than that, I hope you enjoy, and of course, happy blendinating.